Okay, basically this is disclosure number five to Arkansas. Uh, it's essential to understand the situation uh, involving uh, the RICO situation with the Julie Sue, Shirley Weber, Harris, and other parties. Now, plain and simple, the laws say that certain types of actions are considered uh, acts of war against a candidate and certain types of items and attacks against archivers it's a major item as well now when you're talking the the artifacts well again the artifacts uh, I've displayed artifacts that are older than the Constitution of the United States so that's there now, what's important to understand, again, is one of these other factors. It says that all matters concerning, concerning these types of items, uh, uh, you know, attacks against a candidate, acts of war, these items must be completely resolved. These insurrectionist, rebellious uh, actions uh, must be resolved before, before there is an allowance to allow the counting of delegates and before certification occurs. So this is not a game. This is not a joke. So what we have to have is I do have a series of demands to make sure that things are done the right way. Uh, number one, obviously, I want transparency. <clears throat> I want a certain type of transparency, which means I want transparency with the voters about the crimes that were committed, about what different people did, uh, and the, the items also have to deal with compensation. Full and complete compensation must occur by order of the Constitution and Articles of the United States before the counting and certification of the delegates is allowed. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the way this works out is, if parties do not compensate me, you know, I've got a whole line about how the compensation works. If the parties do not compensate me, that means that their delegates, their votes are null and void. That means that these parties have conspired uh, with possibly felony intent, some kind of intent, they are with the aggressors. So they are disqualified from the election. And effectively, certain people are going to be disqualified. Anyhow, basically, uh, yeah, I don't know what to tell people. Basically, yeah, you're wasting your time. You know, Harris, gone, goodbye. You know, she's, she can't make it. She's disqualified. You know, I mean, she shouldn't be on the ballot to begin with. Trump shouldn't be, Trump shouldn't be on the ballot. You know, I, I don't know why people are screwing around because when you get to certain levels, it's not allowed. You know, so when I have documents already filed, this is very important. I have documents already filed in Washington. I've already got them listed. They're already in the archive. They're waiting. They're wait. They're wait, waiting for me to trigger them. <clears throat> you know, this is like one note and bang, they're triggered. It's one authorization, and one or more, whoever I put on it can get into the documents and start using those documents and start using those photographs and those images. So basically it can go, it go two ways. It can, it, uh, it can go three, four, five ways, actually five ways. It can go Congress, it can go Senate, it can go in between. That's a presidential candidate panel. So um, it's just one of those things people don't understand <clears throat> what a presidential candidate panel is. It's very important. Um, at the moment, I got other stuff to go into rather than just explain that. So, as the law goes, the delegates cannot be counted and certified unless the entire matter is resolved, including full financial compensation and this also means adequate time for me to adjust, which means this is gonna we're gonna have to end up doing special elections. This is not gonna be cheap. This is gonna be expensive. Very, very expensive. 
You know, so people thinking that they can get away with something, and, you know, I pop up, and I'm in, in, in Washington. I don't even necessarily have to be there. Documents pop up and say, this is exactly what is said in the Constitution. This is exactly what is said in the Articles. And here's the evidence. This is what's happened. And this is what we got. So it's not a game. It's not a joke. We have people facing the death penalty. This is not a game. You know, uh, you know we're not talking about somebody, somebody borrowed a book and didn't bring it back on time. We're talking about violent attacks on an archive and parties who aided and abetted in those violent attacks. You know, we're talking about lapses of security because other people did what? They attacked the income of a candidate. Attacking the income of a candidate is also an act of war. So this is not a game. So with Julie Sue's little shenanigans, along with <clears throat> Shirley Weber's shenanigans and her aiding and abetting, uh, you know, coupled with the sheer fact that um, the AG's office out of California, again, did not want to help. And, of course, there's other items in chronological order that list, list here. Because there's damage ongoing to the archive, because there's other court cases that are tied to the items, all comes pull, paid full and due. That means all cases to the archive. That means other archive material that I was holding on for other people as their evidence, anything that was their evidence, their important whatever, okay, those people are affected too. So, you know, again, this is not a game. This is not a joke. This is not somebody's shenanigan. Uh, this is evidence. This is lots and lots of hard evidence. This is not something where somebody uh, is going to just make something up and say, yeah, we're just going to do some kind of claim and there's no evidence. This is solid evidence. You know, I've got a year over a year's worth of placing evidence uh, actually quite substantially, you can say intermittently quite substantially, on Twitter. There's a lot on the YouTube. So this is all solid, and you can already see from most of these videos that you're looking at that there's evidence right there. You're looking at something that's clear evidence. You know, violence, <clears throat> attacks, um, an equative factor. You know, 18 mobile broadcast RV mobile archives are lost at this point. Now, into this we also have national security. Some of this material pertains to national security. I already showed in another one I showed the 900 year old artifact. One of the, one of the very old artifacts. That one's a 900 year old artifact. That is the only one known in the world. It is the only one known in the world. To destroy that is a crime against humanity. A crime against humanity. That item must be retrieved at all cost. At all cost. It's the only one known to have blood on it. Some people have said it's just evidence of a blood sacrifice. Well, you know, neither here nor there. People would be ignorant not understanding what processes people are actually using as opposed to Incan, Mayan, and Aztec. You know, the Incan... The Incans were different. Uh, the bloodletting was done a different way and for a different purpose. There was a different process. It was, it was uh, a completely different item uh, <clears throat> than uh, the Mayan or the uh, <clears throat> Aztec uh, practices uh, were a bit different. Uh, anyhow, uh, the, the, none of the, nonetheless, the, the value of that artifact is it's priceless. It is priceless. You know, this is not a game, it's not a joke. So when we get into other information like national security information, parties have to understand, you know, when, when I come, come up to Julie Sue and Shirley Weber and I say, hey, look, you cannot pay me when Congress has ordered me to be paid. You cannot blacklist a candidate and say, You're, we've ordered everything shut down. You cannot destroy a candidate's income. You cannot attack the candidate's nonprofit. You can't attack their museums, their nonprofit holdings. You can't do that. These are items that are separate and they're slated for specific purposes. These are not greed oriented items. 
that's not the way many nonprofits work. They don't work that way. It's not like, oh, yeah, well, you just told another party. Right now, it doesn't work that way. You know, there's a lot of hard work to build certain types of archives. It's just the way it goes. The informational research and the national security information, again, the, the archives are extensive. extensive. So when I start saying national security, there are major items of national security. They deal with, with my private research and a lot of other items. Now, the, my analysis, different other kinds of stuff. I mean, we're talking that information is not export. And we have a problem. We have a problem. The problem is that some of this in, some of this materials that belong to the archive, I believe now from certain intelligence, is located in three different countries. That's countries. Okay, so the proper empirical methodology is to put independent teams together and go retrieve the material. That's the proper way to do things. But we're in insurrection. There's this huge problem. We have areas. We have, uh, uh, what is it, 800 members of law enforcement that have been convicted so far with being associated with the insurrection. This is not a game. It's not a joke. Uh, we've got a lot of different stuff happening. And we also have other people in rebellion. The chronological order of other people, other forces, other people in rebellion, uh, technically has a long evolving history. There's a big debate on that. By the way, by the way, my archive was one of the few archives that was actually bothering to trace that. Now, you might find some major media that, in fact, had some people doing that, but you don't see them surfacing and talking about it. Not that they don't have certain types of information. You don't see them discussing it on the news. Now, so this has been an evolutionary process. With respect to Harris, Harris's actions predate the January 6th item, but they all keep connecting through the same offices, same people. And again, we have this, this multiple problem with false arrest, with police officers that have done things. We have Arkansas that, of course, has investigated several of the items for me. And in one of the items, they said, man, this is just a no-brainer. Uh, there's no way what this officer says is anywhere near the truth. This, this is not a, like a, a tiny mistake or anything. This is blatant harassment of a candidate. And so we're talking harassment of a candidate. These are items that come with 10-year felony sentences. These are not a bookkeeping error where you get a one- to four-year sentence. These are 10 years per violation. Attack on an archiver. That's a 10-year violation. You know, attack on an archive. Uh, deep attack, stuff like this. We're talking ten, multiple 10-year ten violation items, big stuff. Might as well just say 70 years, 70 years. Now, on some of these items, again, there's, it's technically it's death penalty. You know, so now when we come to the parties are in dereliction and, and they don't want to turn over monies for independent teams, because why? They're not trustworthy. They're playing upstairs, downstairs insurance games. You don't do that. You don't do that when somebody, when violence is occurring and these parties are in dereliction duty on one item and we have a security problem that's been created and because the security problem's been created, uh, there is additional actions. We have burglaries that occurred. We have violence. We have gunshots. We have attempted assassinations. Uh, well, who are all of the suspects? Well, gee, let's, let's get onto the list right here. We're not exactly sure who all these people are on that list. But the activity and the actions of the Secretary of State are, state are despicable. You know, the AG, current in California, again, his actions despicable. Julie Sue, again, her actions despicable. She's not going any, any place at all. She's screwed. $31 billion in fraud discovered, and the rest of my investigation still hasn't made it all the way into the Senate yet. You know, we're talking, this thing opens up like you wouldn't believe. So, the proper methodology when national security information is stolen is you immediately retrieve it. 
Now, obviously, I'm using strong words. But if somebody's mindset is making excuses, the malice, their intent, as parties with superior knowledge, they have no right to think that way. So as I put them in front of the American people, because these people are too cheap to turn money over for budgeting, because why? Well, we can't turn this into a civil matter. It's a criminal matter. It's a criminal matter. It's mandated. We've got mandatory violations, and there's mandatory structure by the Constitution. When these people say, oh, we, want it, we aren't going to give you anything unless you turn it into a civil matter, which then they can, they can schedule endlessly. No. Uh-uh. No. No. This, sto this stops the entire election. I won't allow that to happen. Number one. Number two, nobody has the right to say that for their memeism, their memeism, that they're going to interfere with the process of an election. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. And national security? No, 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 no. You can't say we don't care about national security. Okay, people are screwed. They're going to go to prison for a very, very long period of time. Now, as I talk with you delegates, and you people get to understand the gravity of this evidence and how it goes together, I don't want you to start screaming, dumb, you're a dead, I don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't go there. Because I'm looking for people with responsible minds that are going to understand the other material. And a lot of it's going to be, by the way, why does this guy's archive keep coming under attack? That's a very important item. It's crucially important. Why does this guy keep coming under attack? Why would somebody keep attacking an archive and an archiver and a political candidate? Why? Those are good questions. So the importance as right now is each second that goes by, look at a clock, tick, 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 and understand that as each of these things keep circulating around and these parties keep getting periodic phone calls, uh, written text, uh, specialized emails, communications, that these people are in dereliction of duty over documents already served. And they're not acting properly. They want to say, oh, we want to do it this way or that way. Why don't you use this court or the other court? Well, why don't you convert it to this other type of court? No, 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 no. No, no, no. We have constitutional listing for this. We have article listing for this. This is an act of, these are acts of war, act, multiple acts of war against the candidate. The power I have right now disqualifies delegates from being counted or certified. The obligation is these parties are supposed to resolve the problem. I keep asking for rational communications, and these parties keep playing upstairs, downstairs insurance games and making excuses instead of addressing the issue point blank and realizing what happens, realize what goes on. I don't want to hear excuses. I already know what the Constitution says. I already know what the articles say. These parties are in dereliction of duty at a level that's inexcusable. Number one, if your brain just tracked to the point where you said, well, how much money does this person need uh, to put emergency teams together? How much emergency compensation money is needed up front? That's a good question. I estimate the total damage at this point is no less than $2.8 billion. That's a, a semi-replacement cost. That doesn't get us the whole figure. That gets us partially there. Partially there. The data that I custom engineered is worth a lot of money right now. The data to make ultra true core AIs is worth a fortune. AI companies are skyrocketing. And my stolen AI library is worth a fortune. So again, what's going on here? Who's involved? And what player thinks for one moment that they can keep violating national security? 
We can't trust the police. We can't trust these other parties. None of these people are going to look very well testifying either before the Senate or before Congress or anything. They're going to look like Bozo the Clown. They're going to look like they came in from some circus factory. This is not a game. This is not a joke. The evidence is hard and numerous. It's definitive and unavoidable. The simplistics here is these people have superior knowledge. If you have superior knowledge, your head also should have said that many of these people should know exactly how much money is necessary. They rigged an election and blacklisted a candidate out of a special gubernatorial election in California. A special recall election, which also had the gubernatorial. How much does it cost to notify every voter in the state of California and say, hey, uh, something happened, uh, this needs to be explained, and these people want to explain this to you. How much does it cost? Over 10 million voters? Written notification? You're talking at least three notifications. You're talking key legal search arrangement. You're talking mailing cost. You're talking teams working with the data. You're talking printing. You're talking all this. You're talking 20, 30 million dollars, 30 million dollars, just to give adequate notice, to be proper, to be proper, unless somebody's going to try to make an excuse and claim that the voters don't need disclosure. Now, why would any of these parties try to claim that voters don't need disclosure? And what about the other damage? There's other damage here. Again, 18 mobile broadcast RV units. I could have put 12 of them on the road, but people were blacklisting me. They were blacklisting my businesses. They were blacklisting, which were nonprofit. They were blacklisting the archive activity, which was barely hanging on by a thread. It was very hard to keep everything rolling. Very, very hard. But to blacklist it, and do this month after month, year past year. No, 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 no. You don't do that. That's attack. That is an act of war, multiple acts of war against a candidate. You don't do that. Against an archive, you don't do that. That's why we're holding out for the death penalty to be mandatory for some of these people. This is not a game. So the delegates have to be very careful when they interview people and say, who did you say you are again? And what's your position on this stuff? And these people better have a good answer. They better have a good answer because the moment they start playing upstairs, downstairs insurance game, they're intentionally parties with superior knowledge violating national security. That's who these people are. This is not a game. Every second that goes by, this material needs to be retrieved. So we talked about $30 million. That has to happen. How much money is needed to retrieve this stuff? If I tell you we got basically 40 vehicles that we're going to have to trace. Fun, huh? Fun. So the dereliction of duty, when these parties had superior knowledge, that they knew better. They knew better. They were informed. They were told... They knew that this was coming ahead of time as it slipped further and further as they caused bigger and bigger security breaches. And here's the bottom line. We don't know how many of them may be directly involved from different aspects. They could be Russian spies. Who knows? We don't know how this links up. They could be domestic double agents. They can be taking money from Republicans and claim they're de Democrats. We don't exactly know. Honesty has to be on the table here at all time. To stay sharp, honesty has to be on the table. So how much money would somebody like this estimate? Some of these people, they got, they got book rates for this. They can pull out, you can pull out certain empirical methodology items, and there's book rates for it. You need X number of people at so much an hour. 
X number of pieces of equipment, so much office space, so much base security. Yadi yadi, the whole full list. So they know that they might need to turn over seventy million dollars cash up front just to cover operations to go. They know this operations and begin the process of recovery, begin the process of the equivalent of uh, well fire inventory, basically the proper inventory of damage. Uh, you know, a lot of people call it fire inventory. Some people don't, but. Uh, and they know this. They're with superior knowledge. They know this. So you as delegates, you have a job because we're at a crossroads. See, I have to inform you as delegates. This is the most important job that you're ever having. As these messages are going to be brought forward and you're going to be introduced to this and someone walks up to you and says, in case you didn't notice by him saying it, you're sequestered. You're sequestered. You're being tested. You're being informed. You're being screened to see if you can possibly still be a valid delegate. It's very important. National security is online. We have very important election matters, and we have things that have happened that the media has not been telling the public about for various reasons. We have a lot of tactical table items that have to be addressed that are very, very serious. We have to talk about national security. We have to talk about what does mass modeling of economics and national security look like. This is going to look like military tactical table stuff times many, a very, very large scale, because that's what's in play. That's what's going on. We have cyber attacks going on. 1.4 billion, billion cyber attacks a day. This is not a game. We have $10 trillion a year in damage occurring in the United States. Similar numbers for Europe. This election is about people who have qualifications to understand these various matters. This is not a meme game. This is an item of extreme importance. These are some of the biggest decisions that are ever going to be made for the future of this country. Because this nation is at an apex. We are at a crossroads. If we don't make the right decisions, we just might say that we might lose our country. Wrong. Wrong answer. We, in fact, will lose the country. This is not a game. This is not a contest as a beauty contest. It is not a contest for a popularity contest, as many people think that that's what voting is all about. No, there's more to it than that. For once in a very, very long time, we're getting to the point where delegates become more important than ever before in history. Because it's going to look a lot like the past. In fact, the past quite a ways back, as the entire election is liable to end up in a bunch of screaming meme stuff before Congress. A real big, huge, shouting mess with a bunch of very important issues and information. It's not a game. We have a lot of people, they're very good at popularity contests. They're very good at having fun at the party. They're nice people to go to a barbecue with. They might even be fun if you like to smoke pot, whatever your thing is. But what's important here is this nation is at an apex. We have important decisions to make. We have economic competition levels that are mind-boggling. There are decisions that have to be made correctly. I spent decades decades working with designing economic mass models. And for some reason, people keep attacking them and destroying them. Now, we have just risen our consciousness to a whole new level. We're at a national security level again, and we have to ask, who are the players? What are they doing? What, it is, that, what is it that they think that they're doing? 
and I don't want to hear them talk endlessly as their quick as we'll just go to another court, file another court case. Doesn't have to necessarily be filed in court. Not that it hasn't been filed in court. I think some of us understand if I said I've been to court already and there's a problem with the court. Oh well who appointed them? Oh that's not a surprise. Look, this is not a game. This is our nation. There are various avenues that can be utilized that are proper. Going before the Senate, going before Congress, declaring presidential candidate panel rights. All of these are proper, and I have done these various items at various levels. We're tracking forward on this, and I'm giving information to the delegates. You need to pay attention to who these players are. And when I say, look, please, if you think somebody's a criminal, would you please just step away? Set the tee down, set the punch down, walk out of the party. Would you just, just, just walk out of the party? That's the wrong party. Think about returning to the barbecue later, okay? You have to grab a clear head, and you have to understand what this is about. You know, and I've got hundreds of hours of material on YouTube, and I'm not going to apologize that you need to go out and buy a whole bunch of handbooks and sit down and make notes, because it's time for you to go to work. That's right, this is a job, and it's the most important job that delegates have had in this country in more than a hundred years. My name is Michael Crosby. I'm running for president of the United States.